welcome back to another episode of a Rover's Wandering, No Man's Vagabond podcast. I am your host, your favorite Apache Norseman from hell, Rockin' Rob. I want to thank everybody that's been tuning in. If you like what I do, please consider liking this video, sharing this video, and even subscribing to my channel. If you want to support me directly, you can send me a digital tip through outlets like Cash App, Chime, Venmo, and even PayPal to rockinrobsa210. That's R-O-C-K-I-N-R-O-B-S-A-210. On tonight's episode, Petty Is As Petty Does. I will be picking off, excuse me, I will be picking up from where I left off in the previous episode. When I recorded the episode, it was, I have to think about it actually. Yeah, it was uh, yesterday evening as I recall. I had already set up camp and I was in the process of getting ready. I was having a bad day. I find that this podcast kind of serves like a journal of sorts, not only documenting my experiences and advice about being homeless, but kind of giving you a step-by-step experience of what the average day is like for me as a homeless person. Most of those days are bad. Most of them. Some are good. Most of them are not. Today wasn't much better, only a little bit. I was off today. Thankfully, The restaurant I work for is closed this and every single Sunday. When I woke up, I recorded my... Oh, no, I take it back. I recorded that the night before. I went to sleep around 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the evening. For a change of pace, I actually slept relatively well. I did take a couple of Tylenol PM I had reserved... And also, we got some pretty steady rain throughout the night. Nothing crazy, of course. Nothing that would have blown the tent over. But enough to kind of create some nice ambient background noise. And it really helped me to fall asleep. It was decent. I woke up at about 7 in the morning. I want to say me. Actually, it was more like 7.30. I purchased a gallon water bottle a couple of days ago. I used that to take a shower. I don't have my bathing kit with me, and I'll explain why later. Believe me, we'll get to that. Believe it. I used what was left in the water bottle, which was uh, just under half a gallon, to clean up, shower off, and proceeded to head to the bus stop to head to the library. Because it's a Sunday, and it is my day off, I decided to kind of make this most of my day kind of a day to relax and take it easy. Although some of my day was dedicated to studying the menu where I work to get better at understanding it and memorizing it. But for the most part, it was a day to relax and just take it easy. I listened to an audio book, which I did finish watched a couple of random YouTube videos. I uploaded yesterday's episode, well, excuse me, the episode I uploaded earlier today that I recorded the night before, I uploaded that. Which resulted in a little bit of backlash. My friend, quotation marks, took exception to some of the things that I said. She was not happy. She focused on the messenger rather than the message itself. She didn't hear what I was saying. She just heard things she didn't want to hear. She lashed out at me in the YouTube comments, which I promptly deleted the comment. Then she sent me text messages that were rather petty and spiteful. So I decided to tell her, you know what? You want your space? Enjoy your space. You can take the stuff I left there and you can throw it out. I can always replace it. It's just stuff. 
It's better to replace that stuff than have to deal with someone like that for even a moment. In that moment, it was abundantly clear to me why I haven't talked to this person in the better part of 13 years. This person is petty and bitter. I will not devote time and energy to people who do something like use their kindness as a weapon. I mean, yes, she did do something nice for me by letting me stay at her place. But the very next morning, she shut me down when I was trying to open up to her. Right after, she told me the night before that she felt like our conversations were one-sided. She felt like I didn't open up to her. When I tried to do that, she shut me down, told me she needed her space. She has anxiety. Right. That's a funny word for attitude problem. See, what I did is I made a mistake. I made the mistake of assuming what our friendship once was rather than what it really was. This person is very passive aggressive. One minute she's your best friend, the next minute she hates your guts. I've said this before about people who cause problems versus people who have problems. They refer to you as a brother and a compatriot one minute, but the minute you tell them something they don't like, then all of a sudden you're their most mortal enemy. They are the cause of their own problems and you suddenly have become the cause of their problems. I hear a lot of people talking about how people are depressed and they're unhappy. Well, that may be true. And for a lot of people, it makes sense. But you know what doesn't make sense to me? Are people who are super affectionate with you one minute and then the next minute they lash out at you. They demand space. They demand that you keep a distance from them. That's toxic. That's ugly. It's passive aggressive as hell. And I'm not going to cater to petty small mindedness like that. I'm not going to do it. You should never reach out to people who do things like show extreme levels of affection one minute and then use that affection as a weapon against you the next just because you said something they didn't necessarily like. That kind of abusive behavior is not worth tolerating. It's not worth being around people like that. It's passive aggressive as all hell. I went through this with my family. That's why I don't speak to them to this day. Probably never will. And on the day they pass on and leave this world, no, excuse me, I don't like that passive language. The day they are dead, I'm not going to feel anything about it either way. One of my relatives or some such will call me. I'll say, oh, so-and-so died. Okay, that sucks. Toss them in the ground. Not my problem. I'm even going to go as far as to have my name legally changed so that when they do die, I will not be legally responsible for their body. I will tell the state it's your problem. That's not my family. I don't share the same last name as them. Deal with it yourself. I'll have no part of it. I have to remind myself that the friend I had when I was a kid, that friend died a long time ago. That friend isn't there anymore. All that's left is a very confused mess. A petty, bitter, spiteful person who lashes out 
the moment you don't offer them overwhelming praise for every single decision they make, even the bad ones. Which is extremely ironic, considering this same person also likes to criticize other people and make negative remarks about them and says things like, no offense, then proceeds to say something that's blatantly offensive, that's blatantly meant to be disrespectful. Passive aggression. That's what that is. Rules for thee, not for me. I won't be a part of that. I don't care if this offends her. I actually hope it does. Because I do not concern myself with petty, small-minded people who are easily offended. Who are on the warpath in life, looking for something, someone, to take offense to. I will not be party to that. That's their problem. There are people who have problems, and there are people who are problems. Well, this person is the latter. Definitely not the former. She causes her own problems and then acts surprised that she has them. No, I'm all right. I'll start before I ever reach out to that one. I'll pass. Got better things to do. She is most certainly not my priority. Hasn't been for a long time. Certainly isn't now. And never will be. So moving on. After receiving this tirade via text message, I just told her, you can just throw my shit out. Just throw it in the trash. I don't want to deal with you. I decided those, you know, the things she had, they weren't that important. I mean, yeah, she had my shower bag, but I don't need that right this second. I can always get another at Walmart. They're not expensive. Pair, I think a pair of sunglasses and a screwdriver and a coffee mug. Eh, whatever. It's just stuff. Can all be replaced. What can't be replaced is my own sanity. What can't be replaced is the time I have wasted on people like that. And I will not do that anymore. Time is limited. We like to think that we have all this time in the world until one day it just runs out. And we realize we have no time at all. I'm 41 years old. My life is easily halfway over, maybe even two thirds or three quarters of the way over depending on the kind of health problems I'll have in the future, and I will have health problems, I already am. And depending on the method that I exit this world, I mean, you know, I mean, we don't know. Nobody knows. You could live to be 103. You could get hit bus by, excuse me, you could get hit by a bus tomorrow. You don't know. You don't know. My point is that time is precious. People are an investment of your time. And if you think for even a moment that somebody's negativity, passive aggressiveness and pettiness is not worth your time, it's better to offend them and cut them off than it is to deal with them, no matter how helpful they are. Time is limited, people. We only get so much of it. And it's a lot less than you might think. It's not worth it. Don't do it. I shouldn't have even reached out to this person to begin with. So I spent the rest of my day just focusing on me. Enjoying myself, which isn't something I usually get to do. I'm so constantly on the go, constantly doing things. I'm even doing something right now. I'm sitting here at my campsite. I got here a little earlier than usual, which is typical for a Sunday. I'll explain why in a bit. But I spent the day focusing on me. I drank my coffee. 
piddled around on the internet. You know, Facebook, what have you. No, I'm not telling you what my Facebook is. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, met an older lady. She seemed nice. Although I'm not going to lie, uh, she was generous. Gave me more than a couple of cigarettes when I was completely out. Because she saw I was uh, lighting a cigar. Because that was all I had money left for. I had just enough change to get a cigar. As a matter of fact... I was just a little bit short, but a very nice lady standing in the line behind me was courteous enough to pay for it. I offered to give her the rest of my change to make up for it, and she said, no, nah, hold on to it. Now, maybe, possibly, I'm not 100% sure I should be getting paid maybe tomorrow morning. I'm not counting on it quite yet. But supposedly, because I have one of those bank deals where you get the direct deposit up to two days early, maybe I'll get paid tomorrow. Not really counting on it. As a matter of fact, I'm not even counting on getting a direct deposit at my first pay cycle. Typically, that's not what happens. They don't do the direct deposit until the following pay cycle. Then after that, it's direct deposit. Typically, your first payment at a new job, even with a direct deposit deal, is usually a check. More than likely, I'm going to have to wait till, I don't know, possibly as late as Thursday to receive my first check. So I'm not holding out on that. Not holding my breath. Nonetheless, I spoke to this lady. She seemed nice at first. But something I've noticed is that she was kind of setting off a few red flags. She was a little too friendly, which reminded me of someone I just got done speaking about just a few moments ago. She was telling me a lot of personal details about her life, and any time I tried to speak, she would cut me off and continue rambling. I've seen this behavior before. I saw it in my so-called friend who let me crash at her place. She was jabbering the entire night. She was talking more than I was, and I'm a motor mouth. That says something. Jumping from subject to subject to subject. Very, very excited. This, to me, is a red flag. It made me feel a little uneasy after what I had just gone through with my so-called friend. It made me realize that I had seen this behavior not too long ago, as a matter of fact, less than 48 hours ago. I was seeing this much older woman behaving in the same way, telling me very personal things about her life, things that you don't really disclose to somebody when you first meet them. I'm not going into specifics. She seemed nice, and she seemed like her intentions were genuine. But I don't think she realized what she was doing. I don't think she realized that she made me a little uneasy with her overly open nature, her almost manic rambling jumping from one subject to the next talking about uh, a variety of things that just made me feel uneasy very personal aspects of her life then she went on to talk about this conspiracy nonsense about vaccines are evil it's a form of government control I'm like okay so you went full tinfoil hat on me okay Another red flag. She was nice enough to give me some cigarettes and so on, and she was friendly. But I'm not sure if this is somebody I want to reach out to. As if that wasn't bad enough, she set off even more red flags. She started talking about racism. 
and how ever, all these Mexicans are racist. All these people I met in Florida, these Cubans are racist, right? Because white people are just sweet, innocent little angels. Okay, <laughs> whatever, lady. But I didn't say that because I wasn't looking to get into a confrontation with somebody that I don't know. And I don't know what they're capable of. And in all fairness, she did give me some cigarettes. I wanted to be reasonable. I was willing to let her speak. I mean, Jesus, she was talking so damn much I couldn't get a fucking word in edgewise. But it made me uneasy as hell. The rambling, the oversharing of personal information, jumping from subject to subject, the straight up tinfoil nut job conspiracy rhetoric. And the racism, too, you know, saying, you know, this is reversed racist shit. Everybody's being racist to me. I don't. I don't like these thugs. I don't like these Mexicans. <laughs> what? A <laughs> fucking joke. I hate it when, as a person who is predominantly white, mind you, there's some Apache in there, but predominantly I am a white person. I can't deny that. If you look at me and you saw me in normal life, you would look at me and say, that's a white guy. That's as, that dude is as white as fucking Hellman's mayonnaise. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. You wouldn't know it by looking at me that I have Apache blood in me. Nonetheless, what really bothers me and really puts me off about my fellow Anglo-Saxon stock is they assume that because I look like another white person and in fairness I do that I am somehow okay with their racist views that I am okay with their racist rhetoric the classic phrase she brought up I've heard a millions of times, if not billions, from racist people. I don't mean to sound like a racist, but then proceed to say something extremely racist. That really puts me off when people do that. Really, really puts me off. Didn't care for that. And again, I didn't want to start a confrontation with this woman, especially considering how manic and excited she was. I didn't want to cause an argument in the middle of a public library parking lot. And another thing is that even though certain people might share certain points of view that I don't agree with, and even at times I find to be red flags, and even at times I find deplorable, but I'm also empathetic. And as a writer, it's important to have empathy. Because if you can't get into the mindset of other people, people who might not always have the same views as you, you're not going to be that great a writer. The great writers of our time, they have empathy, even for people that they might not necessarily agree with or even like but they understand them, or at least attempt to. They understand what it is that this person might be feeling, or they're at least trying to understand. And it seems to me that this woman, who, you know, she was almost 70 years old, I think that yes, she has some kind of screwy points of view, sometimes bordering down light, right, Rachel, I think that this woman is actually very lonely. I think she's depressed. She talked about relatives who are no longer with her. 
family members that she misses and family members that hurt her. I see beneath all that manic behavior is a very hurt and lonely person, so I didn't argue with her. I didn't even really talk for the most part. I just thanked her for the cigarettes, thanked her for the conversation, just went about my day. Uh, it wasn't until almost four o'clock that I went into the library and realized, oh shit, almost over an hour has passed by talking to this woman. I need to get back to my studies. I was supposed to do that a while ago. So I went over some of my studies and right around six o'clock I left. I got back onto the bus and took the bus back to where I needed to go. I had gotten off one bus, had to connect to the other one, which was about a 15 minute wait. She even hooked me up with a couple extra cigarettes, which was very nice of her. I think even though she has some screwy points of view and points of view I don't necessarily agree with, I don't think she's a horrible person. I just think she's lonely and sad. Well, anyway, what I was trying to say is that I think the woman was just lonely and sad. And even though she kind of set off some red flags and kind of alarmed me a little bit, I don't think she was dangerous. I don't think she was an immediate threat. But she did set off riot flags nonetheless. I was nice to her because she was nice to me. But this is not a person I care to interact with in any long-term kind of situation. I would even go as far to say that it might be in my best interest not to go to that particular library anymore just to avoid running into her again. Personally, I like the library off Ingram better anyhow. It's neater, it's cleaner, a lot less traffic coming into that library. And they even have a private study room, so if I want to record certain things on my phone without any background noise, provided nobody else is in there, and there usually isn't anybody in there in the first place, I think I'm going to start going to that library from now on and just kind of stay away from the one I was at. Um, so anyway, I was on the way back from the library. This woman had given me a couple of cigarettes. And I started feeling agitated. I was angry. I thought back to what my friend had said to me. I thought back to how my employer stiffed me, and I kind of got agitated and angry. I got very agitated and upset and I felt bad. But I took a moment and calmed down. Sure enough, my connecting bus showed up. I got back to my campsite pretty early because on Sundays, unless I have money, which, in this case, I did not, for crying out loud. I didn't even have enough money for an individual cigar today. Almost, but not quite. Which is pretty pitiful. That's under a dollar. Nonetheless, because on Sundays, uh, I, especially on Sundays when I don't have money and I'm off work that day, as I will be every Sunday, at least while I'm working at this restaurant, the problem is that when I don't have any money, I only have two choices of places to go. Two places. I can either go to a local shopping mall or a local public library, which both just so happen to close at the same time, 6 p.m. After 6 p.m., I don't have anywhere I can go other than maybe a public park. And I don't feel like being at a public park because where I am residing right now, it pretty much is like being at the park. When I'm residing during the daytime, I prefer to be somewhere where there is, I don't know, air conditioning. Problem with that is that I can't go anywhere without being considered loitering if I'm not paying for something. If I'm not buying something, purchasing something, or eating something that I have paid for, at that point it's considered loitering and I have to leave. So I came back to camp pretty early. I arrived 
almost 7.30. Now, I should point out that before I got here, when I got on that second bus, we almost had a very serious accident. Correction, collision. Accident implies there's no one to blame. Somebody cut off the bus driver. Aggressively cut off the bus driver. And the bus driver swerved and slammed on his brakes. We practically flew out of our seats because, you know, public buses don't have seatbelts. I had to a lot of my stuff fell out of my lap and we're like whoa what the hell dude he's blaring his horn for a good five seconds and then the exact same driver cuts him off a second time a second time in just a matter of a second this asshole cuts off the bus driver almost causing a crash and veers to the right into a gas station parking lot. That's why he was cutting off the bus driver he wanted. Apparently, he had to get his cigarettes right then and there. Being even a fraction of a second late was a matter of life and death. Fucking ridiculous. It was a petty thing that man did. Or woman, I could see the driver, but that driver did something extremely petty. It almost cost people to get into a serious crash, maybe even get killed. The woman I spoke with at the library had some very petty things to say. Very spiteful, ugly things to say about people who are not of the uh, Eastern and Western European brand of people. My so-called friend, who I will never call a friend again, had some very petty things to say and do to me. And when I called her out on this, she lashed out at me. Which is funny considering she likes to call people out all the time. And quote unquote tell it like it is. It's almost a cliche at this point. Somebody who tells it like it is. Is basically using that as an excuse to act like a dick. But when you call them out on their bad behavior, then you're the one being the asshole. You're the one in the wrong. They're never in the wrong. Everybody else is wrong except them. They are high and mighty and perfect. And you are the one who is always wrong. Because petty is as petty does. I want to thank everybody for tuning in for yet another episode of a Rover's Wandering No Man's Vagabond podcast. I am your host, your favorite Apache Norseman from hell, Rockin' Rob. If you enjoy what I do, please consider liking this video, sharing it, and even subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you want to show direct support, you can send me a digital tip through formats like Cash App, Chime, PayPal, and even Venmo to rockinrobsa210, that is R-O-C-K-I-N-R-O-B-S-A-210. This is the Apache Norseman from Hell, signing off.